Hey, uh, TJ, thanks for filling that uh, questionnaire out. So I'm going to go through most of your must-haves. Um, just to, to try, I like to keep these demos short, about 10 or 15 minutes. Uh, and if it makes sense what you see, then we can jump online and I can do a full demo for you. But this is kind of give you a pretty good idea that we can do the things that you want. Um, so job tracking, let me go before, before I go there. This is typically, if you own the software, your screen is going to look like this when you sign on in the morning if you're a project manager. So here's anything. I want to look up a job. I just click here. If I want to look at subcontracts or print it, create a new one, change orders, purchase orders, you get the idea. And here's those other things, RFI, submittals, transmittals, daily field reports. All of those things are, are right here. So uh, let's just jump into daily field reports real quick. And I've got one that's already filled out. So um, this is something you fill out, obviously, on a daily basis. You know, today's date, what job is it for, uh, what am I doing today, which person actually reported this. Uh, you know, this could be important, especially uh, if you're doing concrete work, that what the temperature was, what the weather was like. Um, and I've had people use these user-defined fields for a lot of different things, but uh, a lot of them will put if, uh, who the inspector was that day. So they have the inspector's name on that on that daily field report. And then down here, you'd be entering who the employee is, what item of work did they do today, is it regular time or overtime, uh, if you're doing prevailing wage, certified projects, uh, what certified class he's working in as on that day and that task, and then how many hours did they work. So you have that recorded. And then if you had subs out there or suppliers and you wanted to track who is out there, you can do that here. If you want to apply your equipment cost to your projects, uh, you would then list your equipment that you had. Like, same as your employee, what did they, do, what were they working on? And then I'll just open this up. Some of these we have recorded in days, summer and hours. It's up to you. Uh, and then how is it operated or standby? So we have multiple rates for that piece of equipment. And then incidents, you know, if I had anything happen out there that they need to know about, I can record it here. If I had any meetings today, what I did, and this notepad's pretty good size, so I can type a lot into here. Uh, and then let's close that. Uh, top right hand corner here, uh, there's a there's a paper clip, so I can attach pictures in there. If I take some pictures for the day, I can attach those in there as well. So that's a daily field report, pretty simple. Uh, RFIs, you know, what job, what RFI number is it? What is it for? Who do I send it to? Is it going to a client or is it going to the um, vendor? Um, what, what was my question? What response came back? And then when I print it out, I have a couple check boxes, check boxes over here. Is it require a plan change, a change order, and a schedule change? If it does, those boxes will print on the actual RFI. Um, date required, the date returned, the date it was approved, who requested. So you follow a lot of information. You get the idea here. Um, and then I can run this little binoculars up here runs queries. So if I want to run RFIs for all my jobs, I'm just going to double click this real quick. And I can say what job I want to run for. Uh, if it's specific RFIs or a specific vendor, I'm just going to run everything I have in the system. And so these are all the RFIs for this project. This is the date that they were required. This is the date they were returned. And if I, if I want to go look at one, it literally is just double clicking that and going back to it. So uh, I'm not going to go into RFIs, transmittals, and submittals all work almost exactly the same way. So you can get logs by job, you can get logs uh, by project or by requester or vendor or client. So um, the next section, let me open my menu back up here. Uh, it's kind of on the security and a few other things. So each menu option, and you can't see me, TJ, but if I hit my F7 button here, I can decide which of these groups, and these are customizable by you, who's allowed into project management. So I'm just going to say the owner and the superintendent can get in there, okay? Um, and if I open up this item and I say who can get in the job reports, obviously I hit my F7 again. And these are the only two people that are allowed in the job report. So each menu option has its own security by, by group. So now let's get into the good stuff. Uh, my background is heavy highway, by the way, in concrete uh, paving. So um, one of my favorite reports is uh, this one here. 
Let me just go find my highway job. So we need a couple things from you to get this thing to work. And then I think if you I don't remember exactly what estimated system you're using, but I, I'll think of it in a second. We would want you to be able to give us by project, by task code or cost code, the budget, including labor, equipment, materials, how many units there are to perform. So it could be, we don't care what the, what the unit type is. It could be square feet, square yards, cubic yards, each is whatever. As long as it's measurable and you guys in the field can measure it. This is the cost that's coming through the accounting system. So this is your materials, your equipment cost, your payroll cost with the burden and fringes and what have you. Then once a week, we're going to ask your guys to report the quantities completed at the end of the week. And then it's going to calculate out, uh, I'll just pick a line here. So in this case, we had 480 units to do. We've completed 200. I budgeted $77 a unit, but I'm spending $69 a unit. So I'm under by about $7. You can get the idea going across here. So the bottom line is, this is pretty useful as the job goes on because sometimes invoices may be late coming in from your vendors. So it's not exact per week. But at the end of the job, before I bid that next job, I can go in and see what my unit costs were on that previous job because these quantities are all going to be updated all my cost is going to be in. I do have people that will split uh, a concrete item uh, and have two line items. It would be concrete labor and concrete materials. And then you know your labor unit cost is spot on because you're processing your payroll every week and you're reporting your quantities every week. So that number is going to be exact. Uh, it's with the materials that sometimes drag getting invoices in from your client or from your vendors. So I have a lot of clients in the concrete area will split their cost codes and have a labor code and a material code. Anyway, so that's one report. Um, the other one that uh, may be really useful for you is uh, this one. Let me find one here. Same thing. Um, I took the dollars out, and so I'm just looking at budgeted budgeted hours, hours of date that came through the payroll, what percent am I actually complete, and it's going to complete my hours to finish, and whether I'm going to be over or under based on my budget. So, again, lots of information going on in here. And a note, note field can just say, you know, uh, estimator screwed this up, or um, yeah, egress is, is, is more difficult than we anticipated. But you can start putting notes in here so people can see those. Um, so I guess you're probably subbing out rebar and a few other things. So, um, I'll show you one report that should be really helpful for you. Um, so this is what we call our subcontract audit. So this is for one job, job 27, uh, and that's my electrical subcontractor. And the original contract I gave him was for $2,900. Then he, whoops. We both signed change order number one. He signed it, and then we signed it. And so I have change order number one. So his new contract is now 3400 And I have sent him change order number two uh, for another 1850 but he hasn't returned it yet. But I know that when he does, he'll have a subcontract, subcontract value of that. And if I go to the second page, it'll list everything that he's invoiced me for, and then it'll be a summary here, and it also will tell me uh, if there's something in uh, AP and accounts payable. So uh, I don't have to go around the building looking for information. I know what change orders are back, what change orders are open. I know if the check's been written yet, and I know what he's invoiced me, all from this one report. So that's that. And that, that, that's really nice. And we do track all the vendor's insurance. Uh, I kind of call them, and my, my saying is it's a three strikes rule. So if your subcontractor does not have a valid insurance policy on file or it's expired, when I go to create a subcontract, it's going to warn me. When I enter that invoice that he sends me in accounts payable, it's going to warn me again. And when I go write him a check, it, I have a choice of either A, warning me, or B, my favorite choice is just not printing the check. It will not even include that in the check processing. So uh, you have a couple ways to uh, track that and get warnings. And it will print out letters to uh, to them to let them know that it is expiring. Close that. Uh, accounts receivable. We do do full progress billing. Uh, AIA 702-703. I'll go find one real quick here. Uh, hang on a second. Um, I was doing something that had that hidden. So here's that same job. These are my schedule of values. 
Uh, if I had changed orders, uh, impacted individual lines would be in here. This is what I'm billing currently. Um, and, and somebody asked me yesterday, and yes, uh, if you had store, material stored on the job, like if you had rebar stored on the job, you could actually put materials in there. I just would have to add those columns back in. Uh, this should look pretty familiar. Uh, very similar to 702, 703, and then the detail behind it. That's that. So, yeah, we do do that. Uh, let me see what else we had in there. Um, I've got all kinds of aging. So I probably have, God, there must be 30 different ones. Uh, but I'll show you um, my favorite one. So, hang on a second. Oh, hang on. Um, We call them call sheets. So I'm just going to pull one up here. It doesn't make any difference. It's, it's an aging, but it makes it a lot easier than an aging. So we sort ours. So here's uh, Bill Simpson. Um, that's my client. There's his phone number, his extension, his cell phone number. Uh, on job 27, these are the three invoices outstanding. On job 13, these are the invoices outstanding. And so it does it by client and then by job. Uh, and if you want, you can actually track notes that will print in here as well for new phone calls. And it does produce the lien releases. I'd have to make sure that we have <clears throat> excuse me, the updated ones for Colorado. I think we do, but um, I can find those and get those for you. Uh, I'm going to jump into equipment real quick because I'm running out of time. I like to keep these short because uh, you're busy. Uh, but so on equipment, when we set up a piece of equipment in here, and I think I have one set up that has a lot of information. So this is a little loader. It's available. It's a classification of a loader, but uh, we put a lot of information in here. You know, where I want my interest expense, where a depreciation expense goes. If it's a lease, who am I making my payment to? So it'll schedule those out. Uh, this takes a little time to do, but um, and a lot of people just shoot from the hip for the first year until they get some data. But this allows you to f calculate out what your rental rate should be based on the utilization hours that you anticipate for the next year and knowing the cost of the ownership and the cost of operation. And then I come up with billing rates. And so we have three rates. Uh, actually, those are the cost. So when it's working, we charge the job $85 an hour. When it's idle or it's on standby, we charge them $20 an hour. And if it's mobilization billing, it's uh, 15 bucks. So for doing that, I can now look at all of the costs that I've ever had on this piece of equipment. So every invoice that goes to accounts payable gets coded to the individual piece of equipment. So did you see those individual repairs? Uh, I can see what revenue was done or what revenue is generated by project and by date. But what you get for all that is this. And this is something you're going to probably look at on a quarterly basis. Um, I'll just run this one. So what you have now is here's all your equipment. This is the unit, so these were built out for 184 days, uh, 300 miles. Um, this is all my costs in the system. This is what the cost is per day, $131 a day. I'm billing it out at $124 a day average. So I'm losing $6 every day that it runs. Not a big deal, but as those numbers become bigger, it's something you're going to want to investigate. If you're reviewing this and you want to see what, you, how you spent $58,000, those are all of the repairs, and then I can drill back another level to see the actual repair. So that's equipment, uh, allows you to do that. Um, I'll go through the list real quick here, hang on a second. So if you're on QuickBooks, we can bring a lot of information in from QuickBooks, like all of your vendors, your equipment list, all of your equipment, your employees, your job list, uh, customers, that kind of stuff we can bring in. And we, the rest of it we bring in through a journal entry, but we can bring in a lot of your master file information pretty quickly and inexpensively as well. Hey, TJ, hope that works for you. Uh, my name's Dennis. Phone number is 800-659-5851. So 800-659-5851. And then I'm going to send you over this link. And I have a customer testimonial from an asphalt company. I know it's a little different, but uh, similar. You know, that they, and they've been using the system for probably 15 years. And so uh, I'll get that over to you as well. Thanks.